Attention, the following video contains scenes of adventure motorcycles being dropped off-road. If you think motorcycles should be kept clean, viewer discretion is advised. Previously on C90 Adventures. I now pronounce this crate open. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> World's most dangerous road. <laughs> The story continues. So previously we'd landed in Anchorage, Alaska, and then ridden up the Dalton Highway off-road to the northernmost point in the Americas, and then back down again to Tarmac. Next, our plan was to ride back down south on a slightly different route to get to the Kenai Peninsula before turning round again and then heading east to Canada. And that is the problem with Alaska, you have to double back on yourself a lot. Uh, the one good thing about this route though is that if you put a smile, an arm, and a foot on it, it actually looks like a boy holding a very large willy. And I kid you not, if you put our route down through Canada, it's this. Anyway. We were on the tarmac and ride in south when I spotted an upgrade for Rachel's bike lying in the road. Up until this point, Rachel was using a $5 washing up bowl as her front storage, but I spotted this larger and stronger plastic shopping basket in the road about to get run over. Yoink. A couple of cable ties later, the basket was attached, we were off, and ready to ride through some more scenery. Now it wasn't long before we spotted a little off-road diversion that we could take, and as Rach was still learning to ride off-road, sometimes she needed a little reassurance that it was going to be okay on the difficult bits. As long as you shout we, you'll be okay. That looks so shit from here. Shut up. How, how do you wish me to help you? Oh yeah, we're about to drop an adventure mode. That was spectacular. <laughs> it's like a hand. <laughs> Afternoon. Hello, I'm fine. Another rest. That's fine. Yes, you're just uh, having a little snooze. from the amount of riding you've done since your last <laughs> which is about there. We've had the first first calamity of the trip. My mudguard, uh, I forgot to put the two bolts in because I left them at home. And the mudguard sunk down, hit the wheel, gripped the wheel, got catapulted forwards, uh, landed about two metres in front of me where I then ran over it. Um, and there he is. He's he's dead. No, no mudguard. Goodbye, mudguard. I knew you well. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I need the, <laughs> <laughs> I need the toilet. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck it. Should we just camp here? Can do. And so, on whatever day it was. God commanded, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> Made fire. When travelling on your motorcycle, everything should have two uses. So, the airbed pump, which is 12 volt. Very useful. Also very good for stubborn fires. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. And since I'd done the man thing of making fire, Rach decided to cook, which I learnt can involve more than three ingredients apparently. Crazy. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed. Thank you for all your effort. No worries at all. It doesn't poison you. You don't have an insurance policy out on you, so there's no point in doing that. <clears throat> All these wonderful ingredients. Uh, I can, though, I can bring to the table uh, bacon A's. <laughs> because everything should taste like bacon. Vegetarian bacon. What time to be alive. Anyway, being August in Alaska means the fall colours are starting to appear, the potholes are filling with water, and the mud and sand is getting more slippery. Oh, and due to my lack of front mudguard and very exposed, non-standard Honda air filter, my front wheel was now throwing sand directly into the air inlet of my engine as I was riding, which Little 90 didn't like. In fact, Little 90 hated eating sand so much that she ate her piston rings and started burning a lot of oil. Uh, also, it turns out we didn't actually film any of her smoking badly, so all we have are some out-of-focus photos. Uh, but don't worry, because using my new editing program, I can seamlessly modify the photo and turn it into video, and you'll never even tell the difference. Anyway, silliness aside, it was time to clean the engine, take it apart, and spend £10 on a new piston which, to those of you with a good memory, will finally explain this footage from two episodes ago. Hi, you're probably wondering what I'm doing rebuilding my Honda C90 engine in Alaska, in America. And there we go. It's because I forgot to bolt on my front mudguard properly and feared a crap air filter when riding on sandy mud. Luckily though, the engine rebuild only cost me the price of a decent breakfast, but to be on the safe side, I cunningly found an old bin lid lying around and adapted it to make an air filter guard and a mudguard to keep the mud out of my eyes and the eyes of my collection of stuffed animals. But we should probably get back to riding down the coast of Alaska. Zoop. Whenever we got the chance, we left the road and rode down the beaches instead. It's always nicer to get closer to the beautiful scenery. Sort of. Do you reckon this is where they got the idea for fake tits? Enough of this silliness. For instance, if we mess up one of the cliff roads down to the beach, it really doesn't go well. Oh, and one unplanned awesome thing was that in the last episode we got to the northernmost road in North America, but while exploring Alaska, we ended up riding the westernmost road as well. Now the plan was to go north to south, but we've now done north and west. So what about east? Well, keep that in your mind, because we might just change our planned route. And speaking of mines, we bumped into this guy. Be very, very, very aware and very careful out there if you defend my honor. Purge within, align with him if you align with me. The enemy will target and attack you. They will take you out in car accident attacks, parking lots, you're very vulnerable. They'll just mow you down and say, oh, it's an accident. I'm going to come into the parking space and clip. They don't even care if they kill you. They just cripple you all up. I mean, it's serious, you guys. I mean, yeah. it's serious war. This is war. No bullshit right. for sure. Cool. Thank you. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> Ed, what just happened? <laughs> well, unfortunately, we went back to ask. We're just really intrigued what, what it's all about. Well, 13 years of World War III, we're done with the silly shit and games, you see. Red Army of Russia, Orange Army nukes. So what you got right there is, oh, the Red Army of Russia is flying high with nukes out the ass. Ha ha ha, he he he, play with me used against me and my country. Now I'm not gonna lie, it was very confusing, but hang on a minute, this guy rhymes everything. Feel free. Make yeah. it easy like. <clears throat> We're just really intrigued what, what it's all about. 
Well, 13 years of World War III, we're done with the silly shit and games, you see. To say a blank intercontinental ballistic missile. There you go, you know what an ICBM is. Well, check the other videos, Yellow Rose, He Is Me, Paris Tax Against Americans. But I'll run out messaging a missile for you right now. Now catch these clues, or we all will lose, because this is no show, in case you did not know. Our families are tired of dying for the failed attempts at trying to just share with you God's love and what hard work can do. You see, nuclear rain is not yummy. So this missile is an intentional dummy. Although this ICBM is not real, the next ones will be the full real deal. Now catch these clues before we all will lose. Because this is no show, in case you did not know. Desert Sands. Marshall over. And then he got a phone call. Uh, after the phone call, over about 15 minutes, we discovered that Bin Laden... Just Bin Laden. ...and Russia... Russia? ...had declared war on America, and Joe was going to drop a... Blank intercontinental ballistic missile. But first, it drop in leaflets with... The lyrics to that song, Message in a Missile. In with some weed. And a big old fat hooter to kill her guns, God's herb. Not drugs, herbs. So they could evacuate, smoke the weed, and read his lyrics, and then thank their Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that they didn't die that day. Uh, well, we think that was it anyway. Will any of you ever catch a clue? No. So we decided to leave. Cheers. I went to do a bit more off-roading. So, uh, welcome to the top of a mountain. Uh, it was it was a long it was a long ride up here. Um, of course, we travelled by Super Cub, uh, which is the which is the only way to travel. Um, we do, however, have a different Super Cub because we now have a we now have an airborne Super Cub. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, yeah, Bob's. Bob Super Cub and it is awesome up here. Hang on a minute. A plane? Bob? A mountain? Right, I'll explain. Rach and I were stood next to our bikes in a car park, uh, I found beef jerky on special offer, when Bob spotted us and decided to come over and have a chat. Uh, hi guys. Uh, I've never approached bikers before, but you and your little Honda 90s look so friendly that I reckon you're alright. Uh, and I'd like to invite you around to my house to stay a couple of nights. Plus, I've got a plane. So we called in at Bob's, who jumped at the chance to ride my Honda Super Cub, and on the second day he offered to take us up in his Piper Super Cub. And what a plane it is. It's a short takeoff and landing plane, which has been specifically modified to take off in less than the length of a bus, and land within two lengths. And the balloon tyres run at just 2.5 psi to allow it to land anywhere. Now due to it being a small plane, we can only go up one at a time, but that does give us the option to get some different camera angles. So once we were airborne, it was a short flight before landing in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and that was how we ended up on a mountain. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>
And once back on the ground, Bob put his plane away. And once back in the hangar, we really couldn't say thank you enough. Eventually though, our thank yous became goodbyes and it was time to get back on the bikes and continue our journey. But thanks again, Bob. You rock. So we were now back on the road and we were starting our journey out of Alaska. In 600 miles we would be in Canada. The roads were smooth and thoroughly repaired, although some of the repairs seemed slightly unnecessary. And incomplete. We rode through very pretty little towns with a continuing backdrop of gorgeous scenery. And very friendly locals who continue to take us in and give us gifts whenever possible. Yeah, what have you got? We've got salmon. Scott has kindly salmon. given us. Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Well, so we can have that for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the wildlife, however, were not always as friendly. So, Rachel, uh, we're outside this lovely apartment block that we stayed in last night. Yeah. Some really friendly people. Uh, your motorcycle appears different uh, than when we left it, though. Yes, it's um, it's acquired a bald spot um, here because all of this used to be there and it no longer is. So we think that some animal or bird now has a much warmer, comfortable nest. <laughs> but, fucking but we did eventually track down the culprit when drying Rachel's seat cover on a table. Stop eating Rachel's seat cover. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Is it on there? Yeah, it's got a bit in his mouth. <laughs> He was a very daring criminal who even returned to the scene of the crime to have another go. <laughs> you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody wildlife. We continued riding towards Canada and with the wild camping that goes with our budget. And I tried to supervise Rachel. <laughs> How? <laughs> I know I haven't intended to you for a while, Ed, but this is unacceptable. <laughs> How did you manage that? It's just the milk. I forgot to put the lid back on. Oh. <laughs> That's quite impressive. <laughs> Can you get me a tissue? And of course, Rach often felt like she needed to supervise me. For instance, if I show me lighting this campfire frame by frame, you'll see the lighter here, and then the petrol vapour ignite. Here's my head. Here's the explosion. Here's Rachel. And here's me moving away so fast I actually suck the sparks towards me as I retreat. Now this might not seem amazing until you see it played at full speed. Right, ready? Go. Fucking hell. Well, Rach, me and my slightly smaller eyebrows sat around the campfire before retreating to the tent to get some sleep for another day's ride. The next day saw us go by quite a few glaciers, and we got so close to one that with a little diversion we could actually park up and go for a walk on it, as Rachel's acting debut will now reenact. We followed the boardwalks over the mud to get to the ice. And once there, we just sort of walked and climbed around a bit, really. But it was very pretty. <laughs> On this week's edition of Into the Keyhole. <laughs> Who would live <laughs> with a bottom like this? It's, I've got a bit of holiday weight. <laughs> Better not drop my camera down there. Now you might have noticed that Rachel's feet were very muddy. And that's because instead of walking back to the bikes on the boards, we decided to take a shortcut across the mud, which didn't go very well. <laughs> it's a bit deep. Uh oh. Quite serious. This, why you listen to the rules and you walk next to the 
cones and not in the quicksand. It's just dramatic reenactment of entering the mud. <laughs> nice. Little bit like a bum hole. Dusty sure is that. I should probably get back to riding motorbikes. Anyway, we were now at the end of September and autumn was well and truly here. The trees were shedding their leaves and they covered the back roads. Our wild camping spots were now yellow and orange instead of green and with the temperature dropping we needed a campfire more and more. However, on one night there was a spectacular upside to camping this far north in autumn. Rach had cooked yet another lovely meal as the sun went down and no sooner had it set than little bursts of light started appearing in the sky. The burst started as faint yellows before getting more and more vivid, before turning white and green and then eventually purple. These were the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights as they're otherwise known and they were spectacular. I saw them in Sweden on a previous C90 trip but nothing like this. They were incredible. They were so incredible that my clothes fell off. We also noticed that a long photo combined with movement gave some cool effects. So Rachel started to write I love 90 in the air with her head torch. She was nearly done when I noticed that she did the nine backwards. So with seconds left on the photo, I demanded she did one more zero on the end of 90. And that was how the I love poo photo came into being. The display lasted for several hours, but eventually it subsided and we got into our tent to get some sleep, still in awe at what nature had treated us to. We were now so close to the border of Canada, and it was in the final few days of Alaska that we put up our tent at the end of another day's ride in autumn to get some sleep and then wake up in the morning to enter Canada before winter hits. Or so we thought. So here we are, camping in autumn. Uh, put up the tent on a lovely little, lovely little dry spot, all's going to well. Um, However, there's signs that winter might have happened at about one o'clock in the morning last night. <laughs> and here we go for the grand reveal. Rachel Lasham, who appears to be braver than I am, uh, opening the tent. Here I'm, we are. I'm not braver, I'm just hungry and I need tea. Right. Ready? Here we go. Da, 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 da. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> When did that happen? <laughs> when somebody says when does <laughs> when did winter start, we can give them the actual minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about one thirty one thirtieth of September two thousand and fourteen. It's not even October. <laughs> We're covered in snow. <laughs> so winter had appeared. Whoops. Rach fired up the stove and brought it into the open porch to warm the tent and make a hot drink. Can I have a tea, Scrat? Yes, please. I'd love one. Once we were both up, we set about clearing the snow off the bikes and then loaded our gear onto them and got ready to ride the snowy Alaska Highway down through northern Canada. Now, we were still on our very slippery summer tyres, which don't mix very well with ice, but we had no choice. Luckily, though, our bikes are small, so we set off into winter anyway to see how we'd get on. And that will be the next episode. Alright guys, well there we go, a uh, 25 minute long video update, uh, longest one ever. I'm not going to lie, this isn't going to be a long outro because it's really late at night and I worked on this for two weeks and about 70 hours and I'm knackered. Um, so yeah, any constructive criticism in the comments, uh, whether you liked the longer version or prefer the shorter ones or any difference, uh, let me know, that'd be cool. Um, very special thank you to uh, Craig Carey Clinch who set up a standing order PayPal donation uh, to me, which was ridiculous but anyway but Craig's donation actually pays for the video editing software so that's why the newer ones are hopefully a bit slicker and a bit better um, as always uh, if you enjoyed the videos then uh, wicked glad I did a good job and the PayPal donate button is on my website uh, c90adventures.co.uk um, follow me on Facebook whatnot uh, click like and subscribe on this video that'd be cool because uh, it helps whatnot and um, yeah so Sorry it was too long, or uh, glad you enjoyed it because it was too long. Uh, I don't know, uh, whatever. And yeah, I'll see you next time, which will be Canada. Oh, uh, and in terms of uh, the reason for the delay, the reason it was so long is because uh, me and Rach actually ended up crossing Canada in winter. So we were on the bikes when it was minus 34. 
So um, that's why I haven't been video editing, because my nuts have only just descended. So um, yeah, that'll be the next video, which will be a lot sooner, because it's now spring. So wicked, and uh, see you next time. Cool, cheers.